Okay, so today we're going to do, um, we're going to be learning about Heron's formula and angle bisectors. So um, we're going to first go over radicals because um, that's important. Um, and in case you just uh, need a refresher and um, Heron's formula and then problems and then angle bisectors and then prop and then a cahoot. Um, so first radicals. Um, so what is a radical? Um, it is just a root or like a square root, a cube root, um, et cetera. And when you're given a radical with no number uh, where this y is, so this white y, um, the radical is assumed to be a square root. And if there is a number where the y is, then it's like the white root of x. So for example, um, uh, like the cube root of 10 is the third root of 10 or the cube root of 10. And okay. So in the chat, just to go over what a radical is, um, express the following in terms of like white root of x. So how would you say this radical? The cortex root of five. Yes, or the fourth root of five. Um, so yeah, you are correct. Um, how about this one? Square root of 203. Yes, that is also correct. And then this one? Cube root of 29. Yeah. And okay, yeah. Okay, so now we're just going to go over simplifying a radical. So um, let's try to simplify cube root of 162. So when we are given any root x and we want to find the exact value of radical, we first have to factor out x. So um, 162 is 3 to the fourth times 2 to the first. So um, after that, we find the white radical of each component of the prime factorization of x. So for example, the cube root of 162 is the cube root of 3 to the fourth times uh, two to the first. So um, this would be the cube root of three to the third times three times two. Um, and that would be equal to three because um, uh, the cube root of three to the power of three is just three uh, multiplied by the cube root of three times two, which is six. So um, yeah, so we just multiply the terms underneath the radical and the terms outside the radical separately. So we get three cube root six. Um, so let's practice. Try to simplify the following. The fourth root of 128. Okay. In the chat, um, put your answers. And um, for the radical symbol, let me just paste that in the chat. Um, like, um, okay, wait, hold on. This is the radical symbol. You can copy paste that. So remember, for this scenario, we're doing fourth root. So it wouldn't be um, square root. It would be like fourth root thingy. Um, so you can either type out fourth root, or you can use this symbol. So in the chat so far, I see two answers. Um, does quad root, is, is it okay if I say quad root? Yeah, it's fine so long as I can understand what you mean. So, okay, so 128 is equal to 2 to the, um, so 32 is 2 to the 5th, 64 is 2 to the 6th, so 128 is 2 to the 7th. Right, so now we know 
that what we're trying to find is actually the fourth root of two to the seven, which is just equal to the fourth root of two to the four times um, two to the third, right? So um, because two to the four times two to the third is just two to the seventh, because remember when you're multiplying um, numbers of the same, like uh, exponents of the same base, you just add together the exponents, right? So to the, um, the fourth root of two to the four times two to the third is equal to two, because remember the fourth root of two to the four is just that base number multiplied by the fourth root of two to the third, right? Which is just eight. So um, yeah, so the answer would be two, um, fourth root eight. So um, it would not be two square two um, because remember it's two to the third. Um, so good job, Shub. And um, I think that might've been the only answer, right? Um, also it's fine if you're not in like a setting where you can like actually do out the math um, to whoever said they were in a train. Um, okay, so um, our next example is uh, radical 175. So um, remember, first thing you have to do is you have to um, factor it up. So um, yeah, and then you find, um, and then you like find the square root of each individual component. So I will again, copy the um, radical symbol into the chat. So what is the square root of 175? Okay, so far I see one answer. There are way more of you, so please participate. Um, okay, can you at least like type something in the chat if you're there? Otherwise I will like call on you and ask you to explain the problem. Okay, yeah, it is five squared seven. So um, 175 is equal to 25, which is five squared multiplied by seven, right? So that means that the square root of 175 is just the square root of five squared times seven, which is just the square root of five squared, which is five times um, the square root of seven, which is just five squared seven. And um, last example, what's the cube root of 27? Um, yeah, good job. It is three. So remember that, um, okay. So remember that the cube root of 20, that 27 is just three cubed, right? So that means the cube root of 27 is the cube root of three cubed. And remember, um, the cube root of anything cubed is just that like base value. So that means the answer is just three. Um, okay. So these are some random radical laws that will help you, um, but we won't be using them in this class. So um, uh, if you don't know them, write them down, or you can look at the slides after class and um, you'll be able to see them. So, yeah. Okay. 
So Heron's formula. I missed a lot of stuff. So what did you go? Wait, what? Sorry. I'm doing this in a train, so I got cut out for the call for two minutes. So what did we go? Um, we just went over radicals. Um, so um, just simplifying them was basically it we did. Um, because they're important to hands for me. Okay, so now we're going to actually go over what Heron's formula is. So we use it to find the area of any triangle, and we're given the length of all two sides. So write down this formula and we'll explain it on the next slide. Or at least like take a screenshot of it so you know what it is. Okay, so, um, okay, so this is the formula. So A, B, and C are just side lengths, and um, it doesn't matter which order they're in because you're going to be performing the same operation. You know, you're going to get the same answer. S now is something you might not have been introduced to, since it is the semi-perimeter or half the perimeter. So A plus B plus C is equal to the perimeter. So the semi-perimeter is just half of that. So half multiplied by a plus b plus c. Okay, so remember semi-perimeter is half the perimeter. So what's the semi-perimeter of triangle one? Right, it is 22. So we do eight plus 20, okay, we do eight plus 20 plus 16, which is just uh, 44, right? And that's the perimeter. And then we remember we multiply it by one half or divide by two and we get 22, which is the answer. Um, okay. Um, triangle two. So um, the side lengths are 60, 80 and 100. So what's the semi-perimeter of triangle two? Right, it is 120. So it's just 60 plus 80 plus 100, which is equal to 240 divided by two, which is equal to 120. So now we're actually going to be using the, um, uh, we're actually gonna be using Heron's formula. So find the area of the triangle with side lengths 10, 13, and 13. So first, what would the semi-perimeter of, of this triangle be? In the chat, what's the semi perimeter of a triangle with side lengths 10, 13, and 13? Good job, it is 18. So we do um, 13 plus 13, which is 26, plus 10, which is 36, divided by 2, which is 18. So that means we um, can replace S with 18 in all of these. And now um, A, B, and C are the side lengths of the triangle. So we'll just go in order. So it's 18 minus 10 for S minus A. And then 18 minus 13, which is equal to 5 for, um, sorry, 18 minus 13, which is S minus B, and 18 minus 13 again, um, because we do have another side length of length 13. So that means we're left with the square root of 18 multiplied by 8, multiplied by 5, multiplied by 5, which is just 5 squared. So now, um, we know that this is just the square root of 18 times 8 times the square root of 5 squared, which is equal to the square root of 18 times 8 times 5, right? But we can simplify the square root of 18 times 8 for, right? So um, 18 times 8, um, let's find the prime factorization of that. So in the chat, what is the prime factorization of 18 times 8? Okay, it might be easier if you just do 18 times 8 and then find the square root of that, or you find the prime factors of that. Okay, so, um, okay, so I see one uh, correct answer. So, out of, so I see three people answered and one of you is correct. So, 
the answer to 18 times 8. Remember, 18 is 3 squared times 2, right? Because it's just 9 times 2. And then 8 is 2 um, to the third, right? It's 2 times 2 times 2. So that means we have 3 squared times 2 times 2 cubed. So now, um, remember, 2 is just 2 to the first, and 2 cubed is um, 2 to the third, right? So um, because we're multiplying 2 to the first and 2 to the third together, we get 2 to the fourth um, as that number. So now we're left with the square root of 3 squared times 2 to the fourth. So this is just equal to 3 squared um, times 2 to the, uh, sorry, times 4 squared since um, 2 to the fourth is 16, right? So that means we find the square root of that. So the square root of that is just 3 times 4 or 12, right? So now we're left with um, 5 multiplied by 12, right? So um, 12 times 5 is equal to 60. So that means that the answer um, of the um, area of the triangle is equal to 60. So, um, okay, what questions do you all have? And if you don't have questions, just say like, I don't have questions in the chat. Okay, if no one has any questions, we will move on um, to another problem. But if you do have questions, feel free to private message me or um, say something. So remember, we find the semi-perimeter first, and then we plug the side length into the equation and we get 60. So um, our first question, find the area of NOH. So, um, okay. Um, okay, find the area of NOH. So um, we know that NJO is a right triangle um, in this equation, and we're given HN is, N, is 10, HO is 16, um, JO is 8, and NJ is 6. So um, yeah, find the area of NOH. Um, so first step you would do is find the length of NO. So in the chat, um, what is the length of N up? Okay, remember that we are given that NJO is a right triangle with N, uh, with the angle J being 90 degrees. Um, so it would, Oh, I did. Um, okay, let's say. Um, okay, so um, H, okay, so NO is equal to six squared plus eight squared um, and the radical of that. So it's just 10, um, right? So um, remember we use the Pythagorean theorem to find that that's 10. So now what we have to do is we have to find the area of a triangle with side lengths of 10, 10, and 16. So in the chat, what would that be? And remember, you can use your calculator for this. Um, no one's stopping you. Um, so yeah. Yeah, you can, but like, um, yeah. In some scenarios, you will not have the ability to divide it down because it won't be an isosceles triangle. And in that case, Heron's triangle would be easier. Yeah, for this one. Okay, so I have seen one answer, two answers. Um, three answers. Okay. 
Um, Can anyone declare what the square root of 480 is? I don't have a calculator. Um, well, wait, what? Okay. Um, anyways, so for this problem, the semi parameter is equal to 10 plus 10 plus 16 divided by 2, which is just equal to 18, right? And then um, we do 18 minus 10 right, which is 8 times 18 minus 10 again, which is also 8, um, multiplied by 18 minus 16, which is just 2. Um, and that would mean that we have an answer of 8, the square root of 18 times 8 times 8 times 2. So um, um, for this scenario, you technically don't have to use Heron's formula. However, um, because we're learning Heron's formula right now, just please do um so yeah okay so that means that we have the square root of eight squared multiplied by the square root of 18 times two um right so 18 times two is 36 which is just six squared meaning we get an answer of 48 and if you divide it down um because it's an isosceles triangle if you divide it um, okay, so if you divide it like this, right, you will get the same answer. So um, this is 10, this would be 8, this would be 8, this would be 10, um, right? So the height would be 6, right? Because um, Pythagorean theorem, since we know these would be 90 degrees, and you get 6 times 16 divided by 2, which is just 6 times 8, which is again 48. Um, so yeah, you would get the same answer. And um, it's, um, if you divide it and um, if you divide it, so you know it's an isosceles triangle, if you divide it down, um, you know, there's still room for error there. So whichever you feel more comfortable doing in an actual math tense problem um, is the uh, method you should use. Whichever you know you will um, have less likely. Um, a chance of messing it up should be the method we use. Um, yes. Okay, so um, second problem. Glenn is fencing off his triangular wrench. The three sides are 123, 150, and 155 meters. What is the area of his wrench to the nearest tenth? So um, make sure that you're using a calculator for this one um because yeah Okay, so um, I don't see any answers. So the first thing you should do is you should calculate the semi-perimeter of this triangle. So in the chat, what is the semi-perimeter of the triangle? So what is half of the perimeter? Okay, yeah. So um, 200, okay, sorry. 123 plus 150 plus 155, um, you would find the semi perimeter to be 214. So good job. Um, right, so after this, you plug it into the equation. So you do 214, okay, wait. So you do the square root of 214 um, multiplied by. 214 minus 123, right? Um, multiplied, okay, sorry. 214 
minus 123 multiplied by 214 minus 150 multiplied by 214 minus 155, right? And you would get um, approximately um, 8,575.2 as your answer when you multiply it out. Remember, I told you to use a calculator. So um, you would just have to plug that in and you'd get 8,575.2 as your answer. So good job to the people who got it. Remember it said in the question that, um, uh, okay, remember it says in the question 8,005, uh, sorry, it says nearest tenth. So it would be 8,575.18 um, as it would not. So 8,575.18 would not be the answer. Um, that's fine. Okay. Um, wait. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the next problem, a triangle's angles are all equal to 60 degrees and one side of the triangle is six inches. Find the area of the triangle and of the triangle in the simplest form. So, um, uh, yesterday we did talk about triangles and angles, um, measures and regular um, shapes, right? We did. So yeah, okay, yeah. Nine is the semi is the semi -permit. So good job. Um, so using that, um, find the area of the triangle. Yeah, it's nine square three. So the semi perimeter is nine, as we said earlier. So we'd have nine times nine minus six times nine minus six times nine minus six. So the reason we're able to assume it's an equilateral triangle is because all the angles are equal to each other, right? Um, it says it in the problem, all the angles are equal to 60 degrees, right? So um, we know that all the sides are the same length. So it would be square root of 243, which is nine square three. Um, so yeah, good job to everyone who got that. Oof, um, well, you saw the answer for that one. Um, so we shall skip it. Um, but basically um, the area of the triangle inscribed, um, you would use the Pythagorean theorem to find that this side that I'm highlighting in magenta, would be the right, it would be 10 because of Pythagorean theorem, because we know that this is a square. Um, and this would be 13, because again, we know this is a square, so this is 90 degrees. And then you would find the area of that using Heron's formula. Um, and the semi perimeter would be 17.5, and um, we would get radical 3,248.4375 as. Uh, which is approximately equal to 57. Um, but yeah, um, you saw the answer, so we will skip that problem. Okay, A is the area of a triangle where it's sides of length 25, 25, and 30. B is the area of a triangle with sides of 25, 20, sorry. Okay, wait. A is the area of a triangle with sides of length 25, 25, and 30. B is the area of a triangle with side lengths of 25, 25, and 40. What is A divided by B? Okay, so I'm seeing multiple answers. So um, yes, the answer is one. So we find the semi-perimeter of both. So the semi-perimeter of A would be equal to 25 plus 25 plus 30 divided by two, which would be equal to 25 plus 15, which is 40. And the semi-perimeter of B would be equal to 25 plus 25 plus 40, which is 90 divided by two, which is 45. So we'd use Heron's formula and we'd get square root of 40 times 40 minus 25 times 40 minus 25 times 40 minus 30, which is equal to um, approximate, which is sorry, which is equal to 300, um, right? And that would be the area of 
that would be equal to a. Um, and then uh, the second triangle would have an area of 45 times 45 minus 25 times 45 minus 25 times 45 minus 40. And that also would have an area of 300. So the area of a divided by b, uh, sorry, the area, uh, sorry, a divided by b is just 300 divided by 300. Um, and yeah, so that would mean that we have an answer of one. All right, okay, does anyone have any questions? Because we went over that a bit quickly. If you don't have any questions in the chat, put I don't have any questions or something like that. So I know. Remember, if you do have any questions, feel free to like unmute or like ask in the chat. Okay. Um, so um, we're going to be going over angle bisector theorem. So, yeah. Okay. So, firstly, an angle bisector is a line that divides an angle in half. So, in this um, diagram, we're able to see that it is um, a um, an angle bisector since this symbol, right? These um, blue symbols, blue curves, mean that the angles are the same measure, right? So we are given in this um, diagram that they are the same measure, right? Um, so we know that this is an angle bisector, that this green line is an angle bisector. Um, so um, now that we know that an angle bisector divides an angle in half, right? The angle bisector theorem for triangles states that AC divided by CD is equal to AB over BD, right? Um, so what that means is that the length of AC, so this thing, right, divided by the length of CD, which is this thing, um, is equal to the length of AB, which is this, um, divided by um, BD. So it's that, right? So if you think about it, it's like the numerators for both of them are the sides that are touching the vertex um, that the angle bisector is coming from, and the denominators do not touch that angle. So um, yeah. So make sure to write this down, um, but it will be on the next slides, or just like memorize it. Okay, so um, remember, it is AC over a CD is equal to AB over BD. So it's, I'm just gonna draw a small triangle here. Um, so you all can remember, or so it'll be there. Right. Um, it would be um, sorry, A, B, C, D, right? It would be A, B over B, D. Okay, sorry, my handwriting is really bad. Um, I'm using a mouse, so I have an excuse. The A, C over C, D. Right. Um, so that is the formula. Hopefully you can read it. So problem one, in the triangle ABC, line segment AD bisects A and point D is on the side of BC. So side AB has a length of 18, side BD has a length of 12, and side AC has a length of 6. What is the length of side CD? So um, my diagram fits this problem, um, but other times you might have different angle names like X, Y, Z or like um, M or like Greek letters, you know, you could have anything as the vertex name, but for this scenario, my diagram is fine. So um, I'm seeing some answers. So um, I'll wait for a few more.
Okay, so I'm saying a lot more answers. So um, remember uh, the formula is AB over BD is equal to AC over CD. So that means we have 18, which is AB over, um, remember this diagram does fit this. So AB is 18, BD is 12, right? And AC is six, right? So that means we just need to find CD, right? Um, so we can, so, um, okay. So we know that 18 over 12 is equal to six over CD. So we can uh, multiply both sides by CD and we get CD um, times 18 over 12, which is just three over two um, is equal to six, right? So we can multiply both sides by two thirds and we'll get um, four is equal to CD. Yeah. Um, so the length of side CD is equal to four. So good job um, to everyone. Okay. If you have any questions, ask them. Okay. So again, remember this shows the same, right? Okay. Problem two, let ABC be a triangle with angle bisector AD um, with D on line segment BC. If BD is equal to two, CD is equal to five, and AB plus AC is 10, find AB and AC and express your answers as fraction. So um, in this scenario, it's slightly different. So you would set um, one of AB and AC. Um, okay, first, um, wait, sorry. Okay, so um, first you wanna draw a diagram. Um, so ABC is um, a triangle with angle bisector AD with D on segment BC. Um, so, wait. So this is our diagram. If BD is equal to two, Right, so we know what this is, and we know what this is. So we just need to know what A, B, and A, C are. Um, remember, uh, T is variables for this. So we can set either of A, B, or A, C to a variable like X, and then we'd set the other one to 10 minus X, and we'd be able to solve. Um, so. I will give you all um, three minutes to solve this. And um, I will just write the proportion again. And remember, um, if you put an answer in the chat, make sure that you are also putting like which side length that goes to. Okay, so I am definitely seeing some answers. Um, so good job to people who have put your answers in. And if you're still solving the problem, you still have some time. So that's also fine. Mm 
Okay, so I am definitely seeing a lot of answers. So A, B, um, so let's set, set one of these to X. So whenever you're, you have a problem that uses a diagram and you're using a variable, or if you're using a variable in general that isn't given in the problem, um, make sure you label uh, um, what X or whatever the variable you're using means. So in this problem, I'm going to use X as AB and 10 minus X as AC, right? Because someone else might use 10, um, X as AC and 10 minus X as AB, right? And when you're done solving a problem, you don't want to get the right answer, but then mess up because you just like didn't um, remember what your variable stood for, right? You wouldn't want to do that to yourself, right? So just make sure you write either what your variable means or you label what your variable means in relation to the problem, just so like you are aware. So now that we know that X is AB and 10 minus X is AC, we can do X divided by two is equal to 10 minus X divided by five, right? So we can get this into, um, uh, so we can multiply both sides by five and then multiply both sides by two, which is just multiplying by 10. So 10 times X over two is just five X. Oof, sorry. Um, and, two, and 10 times 10 minus X is equal to 20 minus two X, right? Um, right? Because um, we cancel the denominator and then multiply by two. Um, when we're multiplying by 10. So that would mean we get 20 minus 2x is equal to 5x. So now we want to be able to find what x is so we can add 2x to both sides so that um, x is only located on one side. So 7x is equal to 20 will be our equation now, right? Um, because 2x, uh, negative 2x plus 2x is equal to zero. So 7x is equal to 20, so that means x is equal to 27, right? Um, so that means that AB is 27, right? So um, we can write that. So AB is 20 over 7, right? And now we want to find what AC is. So we know that AC is equal to 10 minus x, so that means we can do 10 which is just 70 over seven minus um, 20 over seven, right? Is equal to AC, right? Um, so that means that we get um, 50 over seven and that will be what AC is because AC is 10 minus six. So that means that AC is 50 over seven and AB is 20 over seven. Um, so I'm pretty sure everyone like got it. Um, remember you could simplify or not simplify, but you could um, make these into mixed fractions. That is also fine. Um, but yeah, um, so I think uh, most people got it right. So good job. Um, okay. Okay, wait. Um, sorry, I'm just going to clear off this writing and then we can go on to um, angle trisect. So um, in triangle ABC, lines AD and AE tri trisect angle, angle BAC. So find the sum of X and Y. So Unfortunately, we do not have um, an angle trisector theorem, but we could apply the angle bisector theorem to this problem. So in the chat, how would you apply the angle bisector theorem? You could divide it into like two triangles with the triangle in the middle, like in each triangle. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, good job. That is what we would do. Um, someone else unmuted earlier, but your audio was very glitchy. So, um, sorry, I didn't understand what you said. Um, but yeah, that is how you would do. So you would divide this into two triangles. 
Um, so let's look at them in uh, one at a time. So we could have a triangle. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. So we can divide it into triangles ADB or ABD and AEC, right? So um, now we can apply the angled bisector theorem to solve for x. So we know that 21 over 7, or well, we know, okay. Okay, first, in the chat, um, what is what, um, using the angled bisector theorem, what would you do? Like, what, how would you apply the angled bisector theorem in this case? Like which side over which side would equal which side over which side? Twenty-one over seven, and five x minus three over four. Yeah, good job. So we would have AB, which is twenty-one, divided by BE, which is seven, is equal to AD, which is five x minus three over four, which is D, right? So we can simplify the left to get three is equal to five X minus three over four, right? And then we can multiply both sides by four to get 12 is equal to five X minus three. And then we can add three to both sides to get 15 is equal to five X and then divide by five. Right, so we'd get three is equal to x. So we could solve for x to get x is equal to two. Um, right, so we would find, um, um, after that, we would want to find what y is. So we divide it into a, e. Okay, well, you can't see e, but it says e right here, um, right? And it's D here, right? So um, now you will apply the same principle to solve for Y. So in the chat, um, what is, okay, um, how would we use the angle bisector theorem? What side divided by what side would equal what side over what side? 3Y minus one over four equals 16 over eight. Right, good job. So it'll be AB, which is 3Y minus one over, um, ED, which is equal to four, is equal to 16, which is AC over CD, which is eight, right? So we get 16 over eight is equal to three Y minus one over four, or um, three Y minus one over four is equal to 16 over eight. So we can simplify this left side to get two, and then we multiply both sides by four to get eight is equal to three Y minus one, and then we get, we add one to both sides and we get nine is equal to three y, right? So that means after we divide both sides by three, we get y is equal to three. Um, so that means y is three, right? So now that we know what y and x are, um, we have to solve for what the question's asking. So um, this is easy. What is x plus y? I did tell you like 10 seconds. Right, it does. Um, so we know that y is three and we know that x is three. So um, hopefully you know how to solve x plus y. So um, that is six. So we get that as our answer. So um, now we do have time for a Kahoot. So um, in the chat, would you rather um, do the Kahoot for angle bisectors or would you rather do the one for hands formula? And you're allowed to use a calculator for hands from now. Okay. Um, three people said angle bisector four. Um, okay, only one person wants to do Heron's formula. So um, yeah, I think we're gonna do angle bisector theorem. Um, because yeah. 
So yeah. Um, oof, sorry. Okay. So um, Yeah, um, I'm fine waiting. And I will just copy the link in or the, yeah, the link in the chat if um, that makes it easier for anyone. Remember, there are 11 of you, so I expect to see at least like 10 join this. Yeah, you can put silly names, but if you're in the top three, remember after you will have to say like what your name is. No? Wait, sorry, can you, sorry, can you say that again? Um, you're glitching out for me, um, but if you're saying you need a minute, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we'll get started in a minute. So when it's 11.05 here. Okay, so it is 11.05, so we will start. Um, okay, we will start, but you can join. Um, Okay, so this is a really tiny image, but essentially find the missing link if, um, no, right. Essentially, if, um, this is the diagram, um, You have five seconds left. Okay, yeah. So the answer is six. So um, it would be, remember, um, we do the numerators as the side touching the vertex the bisector comes from, and the um, denominators are the ones that don't, right? So these, right? Um, okay, so it would be eight over four is equal to question mark over seven, right? And we can simplify the left to two, 
So we get two is equal to question mark over seven, which is 14 is equal to question mark, right? So um, yeah, good job to the people who got that. Um, yeah. So imagine winning is in first place. Good job. Okay, so the answer is nine. So we get 12 over six is equal to 18 over x, right? Um, so that means that we can simplify the left side to get two is equal to 18 over x. Um, so you can multiply both sides by x, right? And you get two x is equal to 18, and then you divide by two um, to get nine is equal to x, right? So the answer would be nine. Okay, so this again is tiny, so. Why are the pictures so small? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay, so the length um, indicated here is 10. So we would do, um, remember it would be five over four is equal to um, question mark over eight, right? And this would, we can multiply both sides by eight and we'd get um, 40 over four, which is equal to 10. So 10 is equal to question mark. So that would be the answer. Um, and everyone got that right, so good job. Okay, um, I think this is a decent sized picture, but um, yeah. But I'll still draw it in case, you know. Okay, I'm pretty sure for the last few questions, we got seven answers, so I'm just gonna, yeah. Okay, so um, all but one of you got it right. So um, it would be nine divided by three, remember, which is just three, is equal to four over x, right? So we can multiply both sides by x to get three x equals four, and then we divide, okay, wait, hold on. No, I, sorry, it would be x over four. 
Yeah. 9 over 3 is equal to x over 4. So we'd multiply both sides by 4, and we get 12 is equal to x. And that would be our answer. Good job to imagine losing who has a streak of four correct answers. Okay, find the missing line indicated, and this is also tiny. Um, also, I think um, everyone should be able to see the questions on the screen. So if that helps you any, um, then yeah. This is not seven, this is question one. Okay, so the answer was four. So we do 12 divided by six is equal to, um, eight over question mark, right? And that would mean we get two is equal to eight over question mark. So two question mark is equal to eight. So we just divide both sides by two to get question mark is equal to four. Um, say, um, one of you put nine and the other of you put, and someone else put 12. Um, maybe you misclicked. Um, or maybe you didn't, but um, yeah, make sure you know what you did wrong. Because um, it's really easy to mix up values. Honeykip is in the lead. Good job. Um, okay, find X. So remember, this is one of those problems where you'd need to use like 8 minus X for one of the links. So yeah. And I'll draw it bigger in case anybody needs it to be bigger. Everybody answered the question, so you can yeah. skip. The okay, so, um, okay, this was actually rather mixed, but, um, okay, so basically the length of this side would be eight minus X, right? And that would be because um, we know this total length is eight and we know that this length is X, right? So that must mean eight minus X um, is that length. So we get seven over eight minus X is equal to five over X, right? Um, and we can multiply both sides by X and then multiply both sides by eight minus X. So we get seven X is equal to 40 minus five X. Um, and we can add um, five X to both sides to get 12 X is equal to 40. We divide both sides by 12 and remember 40 over 12, so we can divide um, 40 and 12 by four first to get three X is um, equal to 10. So it would be easier to solve like this. So 10 over three is X. You can see that that's not an answer, so we have to put it into mixed form. So we get um, three and one third as our answer. Um, so some of you put, three and one fourth. I think you probably just either misclicked, um, you guessed, or you like didn't read the answer fully. 
So, um, yeah. Imagine losing it in first place. Okay, find X. Um, Okay. Everybody, in yeah. yeah, sorry. Um, okay, so um, the answer was eight. So remember, we would do um, 10 over eight is equal to x, uh, sorry, not x, five over x minus four. So we would multiply both sides by x minus four and then multiply or and then divide both sides by 10 minus eight. To get x minus 4 is equal to um, 8 tenths times 5, which is um, equal to 4, right? So um, you can, well, first, I okay, So we'd simplify 10 eighths first to get 5 fourths, and then and that equals 5 over x minus 4. And then we would multiply both sides by x minus 4 and divide by 5 fourths to get x minus 4 is equal to four. Um, and then we'd add four to both sides and get x equals eight. So a lot of you put 4.4. Um, I'm assuming that was a guess. Um, but yeah, most of you got it correct, so good job. So imagine losing has an answer streak. Okay, so this is a good sized um, picture, but I'll just draw it larger. Okay, so um, half of you got it right, half of you did. So remember, 
um, we'd use 12 minus x for um, this length, um, right? Because this entire length is 12 and this length is x. So we would get 10 over 12 minus x is equal to 8 over x, right? And then we'd multiply both sides by x and then multiply both sides by 12 minus x. And we would get 9, 10x is equal to 96 minus 8x, right? We'd add 8x to both sides to get 18x is equal to 96, right? And remember, um, 96 is equal to 8 times 12, right? Um, so we would divide both sides by 18. Um, and we would get, um, sorry, so we could divide both sides by six first to get 16 is equal to three X. And then we could divide both sides by three and then we'd get X is equal to 16 thirds, um, which is just equal to five and one third. So good job to everyone who got that correct. For those of you, or wait, no, a lot of you did not get that, correct. sorry. Um, only one person got it. So um, just like, I hope you understand this. If you didn't, um, if you have any questions, ask them now, um, please. Otherwise, um, yeah. Okay. okay. So this, again, is a small image. So. Um, you wrote the diagram wrong for the 3x part. Oh, yeah. Um, sorry about that. Yeah, it's 3x minus 8. Okay, so a lot of people got it right this time. So good job. So we would do 26 minus eight to get this length. And that length would be 18, right? And then next we do three X, sorry. We actually use um, angle bisector theorem. So three X minus eight over eight is equal to 36 over 18. Remember we can simplify that to just get two. So we multiply both sides by eight to get 16, right? Um, and then we add eight to both sides, um, sorry, to get 24. And then we would get three X is equal to 24, so X is equal to eight. Um, and that would be our answer. Um, so good job to everyone who did get it. Um, some of you put five. Um, uh, I don't know what you did, um, but yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully you understand the explanation if you put down five. Okay, so um, this um, will be our second last question. Um,
Okay, so um, most of you got it correct. So it would be x over four is equal to three halves, right? So we'd multiply both sides by four and we'd just get x is equal to six, right? Um, so good job to everyone who got um, Someone put nine, uh, maybe you misread your handwriting or um, you accidentally multiplied by, um, I don't know, maybe you accidentally multiplied by something else. Um, we will wrap up at 11.30, so um, this will probably be our last problem, so um, yeah. Okay. Um. okay, so most of you got the right answer. So it would be, um, so remember this entire length is um, nine. So we would get five for this side, right? And then next we would do six X minus three over five is equal to 12 over four, which is just three. We multiply both sides by five, we get 15 is equal to 6x minus 3, and we add 3 to both sides, and we get um, 6x is equal to 18. We divide both sides um, by 6, and we get x is equal to 3. So most of you got that. Um, so good job. Um, so that is our last um, question. Wait. I'm doing yeah but it's 11 30 so i'm just gonna skip these problems um unless there is an end button uh i don't think there is okay well um okay so um good job to imagine winning um anika and imagine losing i think Okay, so imagine losing, imagine winning, um, and Poyo, put your names in the chat. Thank you. Um, I'm imagine losing. Uh, wait, Aniket, are you imagine losing? Yeah, and my brother is Aniket. Oh, okay, wait. Okay. Um, okay, um, Imagine losing, imagine winning. Oh, sorry. Okay, wait. Anika, you said you were imagine losing, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, imagine winning. Okay, you put your name. And then, um, uh, Poyo, who are you? Okay, okay. Um, so class is over. Um, 